from the path of totality, XL Energy is continuing to offer total darkness to some customers tonight. Don't worry, much like the eclipse, it's coming to an end soon. XL crews are still out in the field tonight after a wild and windy weekend prompted thousands of preemptive outages across the front range and the foothills. Turns out, though, getting power back on, easier said than done. As of this evening, XL's outage map still shows some 19,000 or so customers without power. XL said more than 500 crew members are still working to inspect lines, repair damage, and restore service. An XL spokesperson told us this afternoon that some outages may last into tomorrow, especially in places like Arvada and Boulder. Again, most of those outages were preemptive outages. XL chose to cut the power to those lines to prevent them from sparking during this weekend's win. This is the first time that the utility company has shut down power lines in this case, just in case, in Colorado. And it won't be the last. Our resident XL Energy expert, Marshall Zellender, is live and talks with XL Colorado CEO about why, including you right now, Marshall, are still in the dark. <laughs> yeah, we're still getting feedback from viewers who have no power and they just want to know when they can turn their lights back on. Even though our meteorologists were predicting Heavy extreme winds midweek last week, Excel did not notify many customers proactively about proactively turning off the power until it was one day before they turned off the power. Why wasn't Excel also at the beginning of the week preparing customers for what ultimately the decision was to turn people off ahead of time? We acknowledge where there's opportunities to communicate sooner and will work to do that going forward. We've heard that same feedback that you're conveying. This is a tool of last resort. And so we weren't making a definitive decision. We were seeing the same weather, but we know that that weather is likely to change. And we don't want to necessarily cause unnecessary concern and panic if we're not definitive about taking that step of last resort to turn off power. In our last interview, you, I, I pointed out that you like to say safe and reliable. By turning off power proactively, de-energizing lines, does that mean you do not believe your lines are safe and reliable? No, it doesn't mean that at all. What it does mean is that we see wind speeds that are beyond what is the norm and what equipment would be designed to withstand, coupled with very low fuel moisture. From noon to 6 p.m., Excel restored power to more than half the customers that were still waiting. The Public Utilities Commission regulates Excel, and Rebecca White, the director of the PUC, told me she wants immediate Excel customer feedback on Excel's customer outreach. What kind of communication do you want to see from a utility like Excel? Part of what I want to ask the public, um, would you rather receive a notice of a possible outage even if that doesn't occur? or not know until it's a, um, very likely are going to occur. Is there a timeline if power is not turned back on, whether it was purposeful or damage, where the PUC would start issuing punishment, fines, having a hearing, something like that? There's nothing in our rules that say X number of hours power needs to be turned on. We certainly hold the, uh, the, the company sort of overall accountable for getting power back on as soon as we as they can. I believe they are doing that um, in, in terms of this incident over the weekend. People will notice that you have lights on where you are right now. Did you ever lose power at your home? I, I did not lose power at my home. And, and maybe your next question is that, is that because I work for the company it has nothing to do with it. It's where I live. I didn't ask that follow-up question. I just asked if he ever lost power. We've gotten some feedback from several viewers, including Kay and Mike, reaching out from dark neighborhoods that have underground infrastructure, power lines buried in the ground, and they wanted to know why they're dark if they have underground power lines. There are a couple of answers. One is it's possible beyond the neighborhood, the infrastructure is actually above ground. And secondly, it may have been purposeful or it may have been damage to lines that were above ground. My favorite feedback, Mark, is from a viewer who sent a screenshot of their email inbox, the bottom one letting them know their power was restored, the top one 24 minutes later, a reminder from Excel to pay their bill. <laughs> Good timing from Excel on that one. So Marshall, how many people who had their power purposefully turned off now got it back on again? Well, I know who's still out. So well, I guess I could do the math in reverse. This was a struggle throughout the day to get this answer from Excel, but they finally gave back, got back to me a couple about, gosh, I can't talk, about a half hour ago. Of the 55,000 people who had their power purposefully shut off, about 5,000 still have it off. So 50,000 have it back on. 
That's among the almost 20,000 that are still waiting for their power to be turned on. You can yell at me when you come back here for making you do math on live TV. We're journalists. Reverse. That's hard. Reverse math. Yes. <laughs> Marshall, thank you.